Hello everyone, welcome back. We're at Brent's again today for another running session. We've got a load of people down here. Um, I'm not gonna do too much walking and talking. I will let the videos speak for themselves. So I'll chuck a load of clips in now and hopefully you enjoy it. I blame the I blame the driver. Yeah. Too many donuts. It's all them donuts, mate.
as you can probably tell by the noise. Mayflower is back in business. Woohoo! <laughs> Loaded test run with all the Pullmans. And it's performing no problem at all. Really happy. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> All I can say is I'm a very happy bunny right now. So, as you can see, the B1's running pretty happily now. Don't get me wrong, there's still a few little things to sort on it, a few little jobs, but the list is getting smaller and smaller by the day. The main thing now that we're almost happy with it is to repaint it. It's gonna be the same color. I'm just gonna give it a nice fresh coat over the winter and get it sign written hopefully. So that should finish it off well. Um, I've got to take this opportunity just to say thank you so much to Brian and Brent. Brian especially has put so many hours into this loco and I wouldn't be able to enjoy it without his help. Brent, as always, you're a hero. So thank you as well. Far too shiny. <laughs> Be splattering all in a couple hours. Hours. Pretty though. So as you can see, James finally got his engine. This is a brand new Maxi Track Austerity 060, painted in Longmore Military Railway Blue, which I'm sure you'll agree, it looks lovely. After a couple initial niggles, it's now put in a couple days of pretty much faultless running, and James seems very happy with it, so I'm really pleased for him. Hopefully he can enjoy it for many years to come. So we're gonna send the Bobo and a set of box fans. Up to Tidsbury, where James is waiting for us, and he's going to shut them around. The 
to do that, I've got to take it over the crossover right down the far end, which is down there in the background, and then come around wrong road on the other line, and then into Tisbury Yard that way. Look at this view with the sunlight. So we couldn't really seem to get James off the thing, even with the light fading he decided to do some shunting. So we soon filled up Tisbury Yard and had a train to remarshal. We had a bit of assistance from the Metropolitan Bobo which handily is remote control so that makes life easier. But as you can see here the austerity was putting in a good bit of work, doing a bit of shunting, making up a train, ready to head back out. <laughs> So you can see it's just shunting around here, we're just remarshalling his train, putting the brake van on the rear with a bit of help with the Metropolitan Loco as well. And then once the brake van is on the back and he's all sorted, he'll pull up to the departure signal at the end of Tidsbury Yard near the head shunt and then away he'll go onto the main line. Steam on the so one of my intentions with my locos and rolling stock is eventually be able to be in a position where I can run a steam on the Met style train. The main part of that is managing to top and tail. So. I thought I'd take this opportunity to try and practice top and tailing with the Metropolitan Bobo and the Pannier Tank. And I'll be honest, it's a lot harder than it actually looks initially, trying to keep the two locos balanced together, especially when you're top and tail and you've got all the buffers and uh, the loose couplings in between. Trying not to snatch the couplings is very difficult, but it's quite a rewarding sort of thing to learn. 
So yeah, I look forward to doing this more in the future when I've got my London Transport coaches sorted out. So moving on to just tell you about a couple of projects we're up to alongside running trains. We have got to do a big job on the G-Scale Railway this winter. Now we're waiting for the end of the season, so we've got another rally which is freezing nuts off to go at the time of recording this, and then it'll be all guns blazing. So any of you that have been down to the railway before over the past sort of year or so will notice that the G-Scale, the front wall, is collapsing in on itself because some of the sleepers are rotten. So you can see here we've just had a new delivery of some replacement sleepers, and we are using the railway to transport to the correct location. These are super heavy, so you wouldn't want to be carrying them, so why not let the train take the strain? <laughs> Can't believe I just said that. One way of doing it. So we're down here on a Monday, we've got the boys down here as well, even though it's pouring with rain, but that's not stopping us. So we're doing a bit of work um, between now and the rally. We are doing a little link line between Tidsbury Yard and the branch. So the problem we have at the minute is Tidsbury Yard is a bit of a pain to use because you'll get people wanting to go in there and it will mean the main line has to stop running. So you've got to stop everyone and it causes a bit of a backlog, um, which is a bit of a nightmare. So I had the idea when I went to Bath and West with GL5, I don't know if you've seen the video, go and have a look if you haven't. They've got two yards and they're connected by a line that doesn't interfere with the main line. So you can do yard to yard movements without affecting everyone else thought about it down here mentioned it to Brent and he happens to say well someone else had that idea a, a few years back but never did it so here we are so I'll show you what we're getting up to so I'll have to voice over this because my camera's microphone died so here we are anyway but you can see we've got the boys down and uh, this is the area in question so this is the colliery just in front of us here which doesn't see an awful lot of use because of this pain in the backside, getting stuff in and out and blocking the main line up and things. And you can just see the Tidsbury Yard head shunt is down where the boys are sort of stood. And they're now digging the mud out. And they've got the flatbeds there with the sort of containers on the top for putting all the excess mud in. Now, handily, because we needed somewhere to put it all, we'd just before this taken an old fence down which is round by the branch line. You would have seen it in the shots. There's a nice new brown fence there. It was just in front of that. That's given us a lot more room. So what we've done down there is all the sleepers that line the branch line to stop the earth sort of falling in. The sleepers are starting to fall forwards. So what we've done is dig out behind them. We've reset the sleepers and then we're basically back filling behind them with all this mud. So what I'm doing is using the mud to create a sort of embankment behind so it's obviously got to slope down a bit because we don't want it above the bottom of the fence because that'll write it out. But that just sort of is an easy way of basically discarding all the waste and it makes it look a bit prettier down there. So um, yeah, you can see where the boys are digging. That's basically the route it's going to take. So this is Tidsbury Yard here. If we just turn around, you'll see also the end of the head shunt and you can see where we're trying to aim to. My finger sort of points the way. So hence we're digging out that bit of mud and uh, I think we're going to skew the head shunt over slightly just to put a bit of a lead on it and then basically go straight on into a right hand point in the middle of the triangle junction. So hopefully that'll work quite nicely and uh, like I say it'll give us more scope for shunting opportunities. I know Thomas Hoy if you're watching you'll certainly get your use out of it with that little pug. That thing will pull anything as well. Really impressive. But yeah all good. Another little job that we've been doing in the background is we repainted the small signal box. It was really starting to struggle with the weather. The wood was starting to rot. So we've sanded it all back. We went to town on it, painted it in a nice coat of LNER blue with white trim. And I think you'll agree it looks really smart. Sadly, I haven't got a finished picture for some reason. So you'll just have to imagine it with the white window frames as well. But uh, I'm sure you get the idea.
Well, that brings us to the end of this video from Brent House Railway. Hopefully you all enjoyed it as much as we did making it. That pretty much brings us to a conclusion of 2022. Now that the weather's on the turn, we've got a lot of jobs to do on the railway over the winter with some improvements and maintenance. So we will most likely see you again next year for more fun, more trains, more friends. So from us, thank you for watching. Thanks for getting involved, those of you who come down and help out. And we will see you again.